good afternoon and uh, i'm very happy i think probably all very ready for uh, weekend isn't it you you work weekly five days correct hello no sir ah saturday also do you work alternate saturday we work so uh, so tomorrow is also working day yeah yeah it's a working day so then probably we could have covered one more, one more subject <laughs> but uh, anyhow, i think probably you are not interested i think probably i will ask dear ajay sure anyhow thank you so thank i just before i start uh, my this thing how many of you are having a chartered engineer status from either institution of mechan institution of engineers from india or any of the professional bodies like uh, uk in, in normally um, if you go to usa they are called as a p engineering professional engineering but if you go, uh, if you have a europe and uk they call c engineering that is chartered engineer actually in india also we have uh, uh, we called a c engineering how many of you are on that uh, you got the c engineering or uh, or on the process on the pipeline of the, to get the c engineering there are some uh, uh we path actually you know there are some exams and all the things in india generally if you are a member of chartered engineer if you are a member of institution of engineers generally uh, after some years they start with the associate member and member then after that they become a fellowship how many of you are on that line uh, we are um, we have an img certificate uh, so that's a basic for chartered engineer of um, uk sector, uk sector so we are actually in the process of getting img that needs to be okay. very and we also have some lead professionals uh uh lead ap certified okay very good very good so in fact ah, okay that's right that's nice very nice so i make basically i was all, basically i also got uh, i was basically the ambassador of imec uh, to promote mechanical engineering particularly in oman <laughs> among the school children and uh, imec is uh, uh, just, uh, uh, but i was a member of imec then later stage i specialized in since the building services Okay. there is another institution called as chartered institution of building service engineers so uh, that way both way I, I i become a chartered engineer okay since you are an yeah, i think i think you have got very uh, active in uh, that's a sipsi sipsi uk no sipsi uk yeah sipsi uk yeah chartered institution of building service engineers in that yes because mostly i make a lot of people they are do core mechanical engineering like who work in oil industries and the turbines and uh, Uh, the uh, building services uh, normally very as a specialized uh, this uh, sips is normally they do and they have a lot of interaction with ashray also and how many of you are a member of ashray everybody i was in jaipur uh, five of our team members have got ashray certification uh, ashray okay. person uh huh we can answer better for dugapur Uh, okay. No, no. Actually, Kiran is a member of Ashray, so I've seen that. Uh, yeah. Okay. That, yeah. Okay. That's right. Very nice. Yeah. So, do you people normally conduct this type of continuing professional development educations regularly to among yourself to update your uh, uh, like? Of course, this is a part of the training, external training. But um, we do sir. among yourself, interdepartmental uh, continuing professional development. You know, normally, do you carry out in among uh, within yourself with, with your regions and different yeah. offices? CPD okay. score, CPD score, you understand? CPD yes, points. Yes, that's right. Yeah, CPD scores to keep uh, your status status normally. Yeah, I hope this all you are maintaining. Anyhow, I just asked you to find out because many of these type of uh, professional uh, organizations who are not born age to become a member is you may have so much uh, literature is available, and the courses are also available. Similarly, Shri, uh, maybe forty years back ago, we don't have these type of professional societies in India. But now, only the first body was Institution of Engineers, Calcutta. But now we have various societies. Uh, even Shri is also very actively involved uh, because there is a lot of gap between academics and industry. And these type of professional bodies always uh, uh, try to be a bridge between these two, academic and industries. and they always want to share the case studies and they help us actually uh, in promoting the standards and uh, collecting the data and the data is also under 
to go various processes to get the information and that information will be always used as a standards and that standard will be used for the design engineers so it is an evolving process so that is the reason i asked you all the thing so let us now start with that and uh, uh, as i told you we started the first class quickly i'll review whatever we have done this is my habit actually we started with the sustainable air conditioning system design we discussed the main focus on that day was air conditioning we concluded that definitely the conventional air conditioning system is uh, highly energy intensive and it consumes so much of energy so we should always look for the alternative technologies and then plus uh, in the in the refrigeration side plus as well as various design aspects also we should look into the uh, into the air, air distribution side and air handling units like that then we focused uh, on the specialized hospital air conditioning system design because our way we have taken hospital air conditioning is a very specialized uh, system design air conditioning though it is the pro one of one among the process air conditioning system but hospital has got a various uh, stringent control measures so that is the reason we focus on the hospital air conditioning system design we also uh, start uh, talking about And then uh, we have, um, um, in, in fact, uh, indoor air quality and hospital air conditioning is more or less complement to each other. So we focused on, on indoor air quality and then as standard 62, we focused. And yesterday we had a good discussion with the professor, Dr. Yath also. also. We also put uh, various, uh, how, uh, various kinds of filtration, various kinds of duct design and how, how we can eliminate and all the things. So now, we will through today's class we will focus on the energy conservation and we will focus on the code of ashtray 90 for energy efficiency in that as always i tell i told also energy saved is energy created so if as particularly as an engineer we have a lot of responsibilities on our shoulder particularly the hvac engineer uh, since the conventional air conditioning system is a highly energy intensive whatever even is a fraction of the watt kilowatt or what you are, you are going to design at the various stages whether it may be a design of the product or design of the system uh, definitely will always help us uh, in the to, to have this environmental impact uh, because i also in the uh, very briefly discussed in the first class about the climate uh, uh, changes is a very serious issue we have different kind of international protocols like uh, uh, even I think recently uh, India also uh, signed this Kigali agreement of the part of Montreal Protocol very few days ago. Uh, I understand uh, my cabinet has given the approval. That is one of the happiest news uh, to talk about this. Kigali is basically Kigali agreement is related with the uh, hydrofluorocarbons HFCs actually, and it's a part of again Montreal Protocol, and uh, um, the COP in India. India is also leading now, so that way uh, uh, energy uh, as a part of energy saving is a lot of responsibilities to uh, to, to to avoid this uh, climate uh, damages. Actually, what we have done so far, we was we want that our next generation should live um, uh, have peacefully in this planet Earth. Actually, in that <sighs> this is a, I just I thought that probably before I start any lecture, I always want to start with some statistics. Is everybody knows that uh, maybe from part of wealth or part of uh, energy also. Uh, if you see the world population, we have, we have two kinds, developed countries and developing countries. And most of the uh, population is highly densities in developing countries. And very less, I mean, population is less in developed countries. At the same time, that developed countries, that is 20%, they use 60% of the energy, whatever the world energy is consuming. So that is what probably, so probably here, here what the conflict comes. So you may ask, sir, is there any uh, correlation between developed and the energy consumption? I hope uh, the point what I'm coming to say, that, that because they are using 60% and uh, because of that, it's a developed country and we are not using energy because of that's what we are uh, developing countries or underdeveloped countries. So for that purpose only this slide I have given. 
And even I remember in 1980s when Montreal Protocol uh, wanted to implement in the United, United Nations Environment Program, uh, when America wanted to stop of this, uh, 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 this chlorofluorocarbons, CFCs, India has strongly objected because it's even those days, India refrigeration and air conditioning was a uh, luxurious. Uh, whereas in this type of countries, this part of the world, particularly Europe and developed countries, uh, refrigeration and air conditioning is a part of part and parcel of their life. So they consume huge amount of quantity of uh, refrigerants. And then initially they were reluctant to uh, uh, sign in the uh, uh, protocols. But the latest stage, these developed countries have assured them, we will, uh, we will give so much fund uh, to do all this fundamental research. And that basis only India signed, later is China also is involved in that. So that is a part. Montreal Protocol was one of the successful international protocol so far has been implemented to control these ozone depletion substances. So, uh, the, as I told you, the index, the developed countries. So we have different kind of indexes for the quality of life. So that's what probably they use so much energy in that. So that is what the link actually. So most of this uh, uh, energy, what we produce in the world, it's used by the developed countries. And energy conservation and energy efficiency are definitely separate, but they are complementary to each other. So energy conservation is basically achieved when growth of energy consumption is reduced. And then it should be measured in the physical terms. So it is basically, it consists of various processes. Processes like uh, uh, from the starting from the productivity. I mean, in the, my first class, I also told, like whenever we designed this type of air conditioners, how we started using COP, the latest type we called it the energy efficiency ratio. Then we start a seasonal energy efficiency ratio, various factors. So then we also design, try to design. For example, now, whenever I do a design calculations, like I showed the major companies like Carrier, Train, and McWay, York, uh, when I, as a thumb rule, when I do some energy, uh, whenever I'm doing analysis of the tenders, uh, when they submit their code, particularly central uh, chillers, water cold chillers or air cold chillers, we always have some benchmark, uh, this much horsepower, uh, this much kilowatt per uh, tonnage. So there also we have given some weightage when we do analysis for our tender, uh, KPI points actually. We give, in fact, more weightage is for that. Uh, even uh, our capital cost likely may be more, but still we prefer uh, any company who, are, uh, who offer the better uh, chiller with the less energy uh, uh, ratings in that. So, Whereas the uh, energy efficiency is achieved, uh, the energy intensity specific product this is what I'm telling, the process or area of production or the consumption is reduced without affecting the quality. That is very important. Whenever, whenever I'm doing, I, I think that's what I was telling, I was referring, I did a study about three, four years ago, different kinds of buildings in Oman. Like uh, I've done one uh, prayer hall, uh, mosque here, great, uh, the grand mall, and then one of the hospital, and then one office building, and then one uh, hotel industry. So four different kind of different applications. So I have also uh, collected the data, and uh, then I have done and uh, a very big report I have prepared, interim report and final report both I have done actually. So that also, I, if I get the paper, I will share it with you that. So when we go for energy conservation, I said energy saved is energy uh, generated. So when we have uh, energy efficiency, these are some of the advantages. You know that we definitely, uh, we in India, uh, we have really uh, gone in very advanced in various uh, levels. We have different kind of institutions like Energy Efficiency Bureau and uh, uh, Renewable Energy, non so many uh, institutions are there and they are doing, uh, and even IS Bureau of Indian Standards, they also work very closely and they also created so much standards and for the last four, five, four decades in that, very much advanced they have done. And uh, USA definitely, in a, they are the leader in all these things. And, but uh, particularly in this part of the world, in Middle East country, uh, necessity is the mother of the invention. Uh, maybe uh, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, that concept was not there because nobody is having a data and energy is very cheap here. And uh, because 
because most of uh, oil is produced in this. The entire world economy is based on oil, actually. So all, most all the portlands are basically uh, oil-based uh, only, not like India, where we have a coal-based thermal portlands or see, because we have a, a coal is available. Uh, like if you go to the developed countries, we have a lot of nuclear energy. In India also we have, but uh, nuclear energy's contribution is maybe not that much significant, maybe 9% or 10% or 15%. And we also have the renewable energy like wind energy and all the things. So 20 years ago, this was not there in uh, this type of uh, GCC countries, particularly in the Middle East. But now, uh, because of this, all this international environmental protocol, where there are also signatories, all these type of uh, international protocols, even COP, most of these countries they signed, they have a commitment uh, to reduce this carbon release, actually carbon monoxide. And, uh, and they also don't have much uh, um, uh, clean energy, like they don't have uh, hydraulic power stations because uh, we don't know much dams and all the things here, not like India, or maybe in Canada or where we have so much uh, hydraulic power stations are there. And uh, so that's what uh, they always uh, try to improve upon this type of, uh, one is from the source product side, and second is again using the renewable energy to reduce this type of uh, carbon reductions as well as carbon rating because they must have some commitment uh, within this much years. Every government has got a different protocol they must have signed. There is a different a separate department. That's what on that basis only UAE have developed a separate institution called as Mazda. And they do so much research. On that basis only the Estadama, uh, the standard they have, been developed, they, they have developed actually. That has become as a reference now to all this type of thing in that. So these are many uh, uh, energy efficiency benefits, uh, basically. And uh, I hope uh, this you all may be understanding uh, this energy unit intensity. Uh, because uh, this is normally as a benchmark uh, based on the data as normally. Every country has got its own uh, different kind of energy unit in intensity, uh, like uh, with different type of buildings differs because you have a different type of lux level in a hospital. Production level, you have a different type of lux level. And similarly, uh, when you go for uh, air conditioning in, inside comfort, also different kind of comfort requirements when you design. For hospital, we have different inside condition. Maybe when you go for a, um, a product factory uh, design, so probably you can go for a higher uh, temperature, maybe 27, 28 is also okay. Even it can go up to 30 degrees. Or in some places, you don't need air conditioning. Probably you need only evaporative cooling, just like textile industries, spinning mills and weaving mills. So this type of thing, everything in that. So on that basis, every building has got a different uh, uh, envelope and different working hours. We have occupancy rates and different kind of HVAC loads. And we have different kind of light loads. Then, uh, of course, water consumption and fuel consumption. So, so for that purpose, normally uh, they try to have some benchmark called as energy uh, utility index. Index that's a uh, unit is kilowatt hour per meter squared. And then uh, that one I have just normally I have taken the are important factors and contribute to the performance of the building in that. So this uh, generally I have taken from Singapore uh, energy and utility index. I have taken from that because when I was was doing my study here in Oman. <clears throat> we don't have this type of energy literacy data here, and still we are uh, struggling. And because we don't have data, people are not understanding. But probably now we have also a professional institution called as Oman Society of Engineers. So they are also very seriously uh, looking for to collect this type of data and to find out. So these are some of the average energy literacy for the various kinds of buildings, okay, hospitals, offices, supermarkets, hotels, schools, and uh, small clinics in that. So, um, and also, if this all, maybe you may be also uh, considering when you do the micro calculation or when you do the energy efficiency design, we call this uh, uh, cooling degree days as well as heating degree days, HDD and this one. So this I'm talking about uh, in Muscat, the CDD actually, cooling degree days actually, but mostly when you do in Europe or something, we always take the, uh, this all data, so you can take it from the, metrological uh, design values. This must be in the standard also. So basically the cooling degree days determine the 
quantity of energy required to cool your building, it is a measure of how much and how far long it is the outside the temperature was above the certain level, just like a benchmark level. They are commonly used in calculations relating to the energy consumption required to the cool the buildings in the design aspect. So CD values are used to design the size and capacity of the air conditioning units. So on that basis, only this I have taken. So this energy saving, particularly ASHRAE normally uh, as a uh, as a guidance is an uh, ASHRAE standard 90.1 in that. So we have every country has got different kind of standard, different kinds of course. And uh, so, but ASHRAE, again, we all follow ASHRAE 90.1 as well as uh, um, uh, yes. So this uh, normally applies to the uh, small to medium sized buildings uh, with the floor areas up to about 100,000 uh, square feet area. So basically, uh, if you are able how to achieve a, achieve and maintain 50% energy use reduction in any of the uh, buildings, with any site, uh, you have a specific uh, set of building energy systems on that by designing. So that should be a target if you really want to design the design stage. So for that basic understanding of the local climate site requirement and what are the drivers for the building orientation and the budget again, the capital cost as well as the recurring cost and the creativity of the AC engine, design engineer. This I've been telling all the time. The design is a creative issue. It cannot, okay, we have a set of rules, but at the end of the day, how best you are using your creativity, how much the commitment, how much you are putting your heart and soul to, find, to design, to define actually, uh, to design a system when you as an air condition system is, it involves various uh, uh, things, like uh, you have to take a product chiller, and there also you have very limited uh, things because it is coming from different manufacturers, different data sheets are there, then you have a different kind of material, then you have to also involve the different kind of stakeholders, you know, various stages. So this is the what your creativity and then your teamwork actually. So this all basically uh, you have to understand and that is the best factors for the designing on energy efficient system in that. So uh, I, as I've been all, all the time I'm telling, you should always go for the integrated design process approach. But if you ask me, sir, uh, when you go for integrated design process approach, will you be able to design 100%? I will tell, yes, it is not, I cannot assure uh, every system has got its own advantage and disadvantages. That's what I also explained to you. Though we use uh, to, to execute this uh, airport project here in Oman, all high-level uh, latest softwares for designing three-dimensional view, three-dimensional analysis, even in the, we can always visualize it. Even before the site is, how, before the, the plane site, how the building looks, what are the, services will go, all the services, everything, you're able to see the three-dimensional three modeling. Everything we did on uh, computers by using a latest advanced software. But during the execution time, we really uh, failed. It failed in the sense the project delayed almost four to five years because of the uh, quality control issue, various contractors, or maybe there was a lot of communication gap, or it was not documented properly. Various agencies, you know, you know in the site, various uh, agencies are involved. There will be a main contractor, a civil contractor, and there will be electrical contractor, there will be air conditioning contractor, even electrical all, air conditioning also, there will be so much subcontractors, which all in the first class I mentioned, for reducting most of the thing, either you are a free fabricated or sometimes you, you are locally fabricated. And then piping, you may have a different kind of uh, piping contractor, then you have erection contract, I mean, all the equipments are tested and brought to the site. So this is all with the standard specification like inspection certificate, you have to also ensure that the same product is delivered and the same product is installed as per the installation manuals. And then all these things again, finally, uh, is it being properly tested? And then it is pre-tested and tested and commissioned and documented. So various stages also there. So definitely energy saving become a very important topic nowadays, uh, uh, everywhere, the whole Whole world, uh, so it definitely. Uh, what are why? What are the essence? What are the critical uh, need of the energy saving? What will what we need actually? We need definitely an experienced and innovative design team, as I told also. And then we also need a database, uh, an integrated design process based on the integrated design process. Also, it should be also based on certain benchmark value. 
and then uh, as much as possible you need to have a daylighting uh, consultant because this lighting is also become a very specialized area now uh, and then lighting consultant as well as air conditioning consultant they have to work like both brothers actually because many times all the services their fittings and everything if you go on if during the execution time most of this uh, uh, lighting fittings they are so much advanced now and then you are ducting also you are taking about the false ceiling and you and the architect always give a very very limited space so you may have a different difficulties in execution time in the design uh, you may not anticipate all the thing so this all uh, you need to uh, avoid you are, that's what yesterday also i told the meaning of this risk management risk management calculation at the design stage is a must what type of risk how much risk factor and how much it is it is going to affect during the execution time also then energy modeling every software has got energy modeling then commissioning we have a commissioning course now commissioning is also uh, emerging as a very specialized subject particularly in air conditioning uh, hvac commissioning has become a very different a specialized commissioning uh, very specialized area now a big big uh, like district air conditioning in dubai and all the thing they have a district uh, air cooling system so in that type of building we may have 20000 50000 tons of plants and uh, so uh, that type of uh, uh, such a big uh, plant we need a proper uh, pre commissioning as well as commissioning and then testing and then documentation in that and then the training of the uh, staffs who are going to maintain that one and then um, automation the automation is also very very important particularly the building management system and though we have a very sophisticated controls nowadays uh, but all these sensors uh, now uh, you know uh, i i still remember uh, in 1988 or something i was trying to develop the microprocessor control for the railway coach air conditioning system i remember it was a isre a rashtra conference and i was uh, presenting one paper about the microprocessed uh, controls in the uh, train compartment um, that those days we don't have a three tier ac it was a two tier ac uh, mostly because three tier ac started coming maybe after 90s only this may be 88 or 89 i still remember when i was uh, trying to work work out on that uh, two tier uh, microprocessor based controls but now this has become a, a more modern um, bms system and all the things that time i was not aware much on that so when i was design when i was making that paper we have put various sensors even i was presenting the paper at the industrial representative the first question what they asked me was uh, what is the nsc of your sensors now i put the various sensors at different places like supplier duct i put the humidistat or uh, uh, thermostat and the sensors will also send the signal then it will try to get the analog signal to digital signal and then how much time it will take the nsc of that one and how much response time my uh, mechanical equipment will respond like my compressor or uh, this this are for the question so at that time was uh, i was not much uh, clear about that but let us stage the practice and when we work on the system when we see and there's so much advances later it has come particularly on the building automation system building management system the building management system is definitely a very very important it's a part and parcel of hvac system design i hope you all strongly or you are recommending bms system when you are designing your uh, hvac system for any irrespective of whether it is a smaller system or bigger system i hope that uh, automation system in association with to monitor your air conditioning system i strongly recommend that you should always recommend the bms system i hope you are you doing i'm just asking say like for example you are designing a hotel a project let us say uh, 300 room hotel project are we recommending the bms system or if you are designing a hospital about say 200 bed hospital or 300 bed hospital are you recommending bms system as a part of your hvc system hello yes sir actually uh, the whatever project i have been working on okay I've so you have the uh huh Uh, in most of those uh, the uh, the engineer of record they have already they had already mentioned that they are going to use the bms system so yes, uh, yes uh, we understand the importance of that and uh, in case we design it from scratch we always go mm -hmm. with that okay that's right that's what that that should be also very important point because this bms definitely will help us not only on the design stage even during the operational stage also operation time also the 
own contractor who are operating and maintaining the contractor will also they can uh, use it this vms system for the uh, uh, logging the data and then latest for the energy study then, then it will be useful also uh, to carry out the energy auditing because uh, energy auditing is another subject which is a part of uh, the maintenance contractor or facilities management contractor in that and the air conditioning industry is growing exponentially growing actually uh, you know uh, the whole uh, you, this was the only flourishing industry uh, irrespective of uh, uh, the uh, very downtown everywhere uh, every industry is because the climate is also very harsh and people are manufacturing everywhere uh, whether it's a, a unitary type of air conditioners or package air conditioners or central air conditioning and they don't have a time that's what uh, jokingly or sarcastically i mentioned all these leading manufacturers probably uh, you people don't use much uh, r and d in uh, in the development of our uh, refrigeration product I, i don't know if i'm wrong you can correct me you know how much we have done in automobile engineering how much r and d we have done you i'm just asking like for example uh, a car about 50 years ago back and how much uh, advanced car like if you go to the benz or bmw everything the safety not only this if we have also done but comparatively compared to the ic engine design ic engine design improvement the controls even the embedded part actually relatively what we have done in our refrigeration equipment people will tell okay sir we have done so much advancement design in compressor or heat exchanger we have done a lot of uh, things in micro uh, channel heat anything we can do but to me my personal opinion uh, we have uh, we have not done much what the automobile in industries have done in that and uh, because we are also very energy intensive also actually this is what my personal opinion but if i am wrong you can correct like me so i whenever whenever the platforms whenever the opportunities i get i always tell uh, who all these uh, major manufacturers like carrier ashray sorry carrier and train and uh, uh, this york uh, macway people when they are there even uh, johnson and controls and all this type of leading uh, manufacturers they can also the leading uh, manufacturers when they come actually so that's what every government has always taken a lot of initiatives to adopt energy efficient air conditioning system this is also in my first class i told uh, most of the government and from the source itself they will specify um, uh, the same energy star ratings energy if you see about 50 years ago uh, one very few companies in india who manufactures air conditioners uh, there was a delhi based company called as fidas loye and then this voltas and blue star these are the three leading companies maybe 40 years ago and they were mainly focusing on window type of air conditioners and then maybe voltas and blue star also they normally get it assembled from somewhere else they put there uh our uh, 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 their name in that but fidas loy they have a very big factory in somewhere in uh, delhi bogla and uh, they started manufacturing and but those days as i told you air conditioning was a luxurious and but now it is become a part and parcel of our life to everybody in that so the government always put the various initiatives to adopt the energy efficient system they also introduced the star ratings and uh, they also so that with, if the road of this much a star you this you cannot be uh, come into the market because and a common man may not be knowing all the thing in that so this is what i was telling on that day this work research work rich national laboratory uh, ornl and they are basically it's a very good uh, research laboratory based in us and they have done they do lot of research study even they also developed lot of modeling last time also i told that i have used their heat pump model which they developed probably 30 40 years ago uh, for my simulation of some of my air conditioning system uh, maybe uh, 30 years ago and it was the most of the source code was written on fortran actually and and uh, so they are also co concluding that um, smart air, uh, everybody is always trying to go for a smart hvac system and they also conclude that uh, uh, improving air conditioning efficiency could avoid almost 100 billion tons of carbon dioxide so this is what the leading air conditioning engineers should invest more on their r and d this is my personal conclusion in that so if you see the traditional design process uh, as a design stage we have architect the owner is there architect directly relate with the owner because and then we have a contractors we have engineers then there are cost consultants 
and then we have specialists uh, like uh, various specialists in your lighting we, we, we come uh, coming like this hvac acoustic fire security communication energy commissioning all this type of uh, specialists will be there so this is normally a traditional design process now when i talk about the integrated design process we have a design team leader with a certain uh, target value and then every time you know uh, the hierarchy this is called as integrated design process so uh, uh, the communication is all every, all everybody knows what they are doing actually so this is the advantage of the integrated design process and uh, the key design activities for energy efficiency uh, this is a, a thing probably you may be also doing uh, but still uh, just for a line diagram uh, first the kick off uh, the concept of the design identify your uh, design goals actually then uh, do some brainstorming sessions uh, to understand the um, zoning and all the things in that then uh, schematic design when you go for the schematic design come up with alternative goals and then when you go to the development a uh, um, um, lot of analysis when you do uh, cost analysis and then doing the documentation design documentation and then uh, all these team members you present it make them to understand because you bring them to your level and uh, all, all every time you review it all the various stages and then it should be feedback also this is a flow diagram which you may be do doing also but uh, in the design activities uh, you have to do all these things in there so yeah, when when you do the in the concepts side uh, this is what i have shown in the figure uh, the status of the site conditions as much as possible this all some of the part will be useful by a uh, architect as much as possible use the natural resources like even when you design your air conditioning find as much as uh, 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 data like sun wind uh, the orientation of the building in that and low availability of the local materials and as much as possible you also try to use this reused material and uh, then uh, particularly about the uh, if you have a documentation regarding the uh, utilities available there already and uh, surrounding buildings uh, what are the conditions what type of code they used what type of regulations local regulation they have and this all you have to have at the design stage itself you may be in your having library also uh, uh, landscaping of the heat island as much as possible um, uh, the landscaping Sell them. Uh, who always now? Now even people always try to come the roof uh, gardening. So they always feel that. So that will definitely give so much uh, shading effect. The shading effect is another important aspect when you do your heat load calculations. Uh, similarly, uh, all these site uh, sustainability opportunities when you are going for a LEED certification or your local green building certification. So these all definitely to be considered. It will definitely encourage uh, to get the uh, uh, energy saving in that. so when we in the design a schematic design itself as much as possible put very now you have advanced software put this various outdoor design conditions and find out this uh, local this thing and then um, uh, as an interdisciplinary messages you interact with your uh, other other counterparts and then uh, particularly this architect like i was doing is oman museum here it is one of the uh, iconic building it took almost 4 years but the design stage itself it took almost one and a half years we have various architects various consultant from different parts of the world uh, because this is a very specialized uh, museum and uh, 400 million real uh, just to be completed commissioning is going on it is almost uh, 300 km away from muscat and it is a very dry area uh, it's a, not like muscat is very near to the coast area but this is a mountain area actually and uh, very uh, like a desert actually so even there was an idea uh, we because uh, so much places we have to use uh, uh, so much fresh air so we thought that why can't we use the evaporative cooling system some areas uh, this uh, interesting because the architects are from australia and then we have a process consultant from usa and being a museum we also have a specialized uh, Uh, because almost thousand years by old back history we have to bring it so it was very interesting uh, design process so the, so on that time initially we when we thought that we should go for a lead uh, building 
really we want that but uh, all that all been through but later stage uh, again uh, we uh, because of the uh, fees and then so much points we could not square it. i mean even for example we want to um, use this recycled water like we call a sewage treatment plant the water which we use we want to put the recycling plant and then we want to reuse it uh, for the landscaping which normally we use in india everywhere we use but uh, here the protocol particularly uh, in the royal family they have something psychological concept they told that no that is not allowed so this type of points we are not able to square it and then we also wanted to put some renewable energy solar panels in the uh, in the in the fact fact Okay, and then we also put a record. so much car parking area we use it. So, but later stage we dropped the idea of that. But building is completed in that, and uh, so this all uh, it should be interdisciplinary uh, uh, discussion, and uh, um, it's a must actually because I have I I I've involved in the project successfully. It'll be almost four years it took us, uh, two years we took almost fifty percent of the project uh, time we spent only on the design aspect, and then tender floating, you know, uh, then uh, tender evaluation. And then execution and all the things in that. And uh, so basically, uh, any type of uh, 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 possible, ideally involving those will be responsible for the services in use. The members of the facilities and IT team, they, this discussion will help us with the flexibility requirements to accommodate the future change. Because integrated design, you should involve all the people. Because you should always forecast if, when you design the building. And uh, this many times it is not happening. And uh, I know there could be some uh, difficulties at the availability of the space and all the thing. But uh, if everything, if you have a, at the design at the starting of the concept of design, if you spend more time and uh, give a realistic cost, but when it, because for, to, to give the realistic cost, what we need a database for the costing. And many times, uh, the most of the consultant, uh, they don't update the database. Because you always, this costing is also related to the inflation. So we, that has to be updated. Many times we don't do that one. And then it just, it, this creates so much issues when we do the tender analysis and when the tenders are open actually in that. So these type of things, uh, definitely uh, you, have, you can consider, which I also uh, felt because here we may not have that type of database uh, of, uh, we don't know much inflation, maybe 10, to 10 years ago. Uh, more, more or less, uh, the prices are very, very fixed because the tax structure is very, very low here. But for the last ten years, uh, in Middle East countries also, they, they have various types of indirect taxes, and inflation is also definitely is there. Even the fuel price is not uh, fixed here. Not like, same like India. Every month, the uh, prices are changing now. And uh, so that way, now the cost consultants also, they have to update their, uh, their database. Otherwise, 10 years ago, when I designed my airplane system, in, uh, the, I, whatever the database, I can use it. But now it is not the case. I have to also take the inflation rate factors in my uh, costing in that. So you have to also understand uh, the function, the clear function of the building. Many times, at that taste, that's what the need statement. Need statement of the building should be very clearly to be understood by all the stakeholders. Many times, even the uh, the owner he does not know what for he wants that he looks in a different angle. I have seen so much cold rooms in the northern part of India. In I am talking maybe nineties, many cold rooms, and they don't that is not properly designed, and they don't use even proper uh, refrigeration equipment. Now the situation must have changed. I have done so much study. I traveled almost uh, Muradabad everywhere. Why they keep so much meat uh, and the, uh, the uh, store cold rooms for uh, meat cold rooms where ammonia plants are there. And they always keep all this slow speed or uh, compressors, maybe uh, which normally runs 300 RPM. And uh, no, no, nobody is ready to use this high speed compressors and which energy efficient compressors, energy efficient uh, system. <clears throat> so I have also interacted with, uh, with them those days. Why don't you people, uh, owner, when I went them, the owner is not, because for him, his calculation is based on this much space area and uh, he does not bother about the energy. Because when it comes to the refrigeration side, mostly the refrigeration decision is taken by the people who are operating that uh, refrigeration air conditioning. And then most of the mechanics, they're very comfortable uh, in the slow speed compressors. 
because the, those days i am talking about the reciprocating compressors we may not have this type of advanced high technology scroll compressor or screw compressor not even servicing uh, they are very familiar with that and they also not really updated the high speed compressors though it is reciprocating in the the design part like we have a if you go to the slow speed compressors they have the design is very simple they can easily open it the valve read and all the things but when it comes to this uh, high speed compressor the, the the design is so slightly complicated so i told the particular uh, 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 owner and we have presented so much uh, uh, technical issues in a very simple language even we translated to the local language we conducted a workshop a chain of workshops brainstorming sessions we brought them to all in one table owner as well as all the service people and then we they understood we have done some study also how much okay maybe the capital cost will be slightly more but the recurring cost because you were uh, based on the current consumption because uh, the slow speed compressors and uh, this high speed compressor uh, the energy consumption is so uh, much but sometimes those days we don't have this type of uh, institutions to monitor the energy consumption also so that was also one of the reason those days but now the things have definitely changed so the the function of the building and uh, this application of the refrigeration equipment also and then uh, 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 as a uh, uh, legal requirement like uh, if uh, they come tomorrow uh, like delhi and all the things they put any building now you want to design need, this need to be have minimum of silver certification of the lead or the green building of isre whatever in india in that if they make it as a mandatory requirement then probably we can promote more green buildings but i think in india Uh, now since because of the awareness and may be one of the reason awareness another reason is also the energy tariffs are also definitely very very high different also and that is what exactly middle east also now is coming middle east now earlier the rates were very very fixed irrespective of uh, the building what type of building in that uh, i'm just telling an example in oman produce one unit of your, uh, electricity one kilowatt hour one kilowatt hour uh, we spend almost 50 to 60 paise and what i pay for the last uh, maybe 15 or 20 years 25 years 24 years the same of 10 paise so uh, almost 60 paise which was highly subsidized but uh, from the last year onwards or maybe 2020 or 2021 the tariffs have been completely revised and uh, that first they introduced in the industrial area industrial buildings and then slowly they uh, moved to the institutional buildings uh, all this market and if you are consuming 1.5 billion unit per annum and if you cross that one then you have a different tariff rates which was used in earlier in all these countries even developed countries they have different energy uh, tariffs and in fact in us and all the things this, this, this was used maybe um, any decades ago and uh, but in middle east country they they started using now only uh, especially even the normal people common people now it has started using only this two months back only in oman for that also there is a lot of resistance uh, the local people even they are also now they put if you are an expat rate you have to you have to pay a different kind of uh, tariff and then if you are a local citizen for them there is a different kind of uh, tariff then you may ask sir so how they do how do they know understand all the things so this is all there they have a different identification the database and uh, they have a very digitalized system in that the, the code the moment you enter the citizen also has a different correct like what we are having other code and similarly here we have also called a citizen number actually so if you put that one all the things details will be available that is digitalized that is the advantage of that one so it is a legal requirement if any of the government if they put in that way india has really uh, doing a wonderful job in that and then uh, um, uh, minimum energy performance requirement national building code had to be updated every 5 years because the technology is also evolving so what i have done a national code five year maybe 2015 now in 2020 the technology is definitely there are many technology advancements are there and uh, the ratings are also different so that definitely to be updated and that update definitely should be referred by us people who are going to design in that so the library had to be also updated in that so these all uh, various uh, rating methods lead of course you know that similarly we have ashray they also have a different rating and then 
then we have a, and only for the energy, we have EPA. And then ASHRAE building is also another uh, ASHRAE part of the one. Uh, then particularly different state. America has got a different state. California is definitely doing so much work, does so much documentation. Again, California is the place where uh, they don't have much water. They don't have, and then outside the tropical climate, not like uh, uh, you, uh, like uh, New Jersey or uh, New York or Boston like that. And then uh, we have a uh, chartered institution of building service engineers, SIPs actually in that. And uh, this all, uh, uh, ASHRAE is a, uh, ASHRAE as a quote, and we all uh, different uh, this thing that. Uh, when we have uh, uh, in a, two groups, environmental energy group, or lead and ASHRAE, then energy only, this is what I told in the previous chapter also. Now come to the difference actually. Uh, now ASHRAE building, this, this standard percentage based on the ratio of the energy utility energy building energy utility intensity of the building and they always take the statistics is always very interesting yeah instead of if sometimes you take average sometimes you take median then you go for standard deviation or even you go for uh, regression analysis based on the data so that uh, epa normally they go for the energy star rating in that uh, so on that basis they also distinguish in that so these all uh, probably depending upon your local when you are designing what type of uh, code you are going to refer it all i leave it entirely to the team in the design team in that but general uh, idea is uh, general idea is when you design one is from the product point of view chiller side so what type of chiller what maximum we can do it is available we know that every manufacturer has got different kind of er but that also uh, they put some conditions that you are subject to the, that condition, but you are, when the operating conditions also vary uh, continuously. Uh, uh, so on that basis also, you have to also put in your design selection, uh, because as I told you, when you take your inside temperature, outside temperature for the design calculation, and how you take like, are you taking series the cooling degree days? Are you taking the extreme condition? And on this all, it comes so in the first class also, I told you, it needs all so much mathematical modeling and then so much analysis. So that really helps you when you do your advanced software tools in that. And similarly, when it comes to the air distribution side, as much as possible, uh, air pressure losses, and then use uh, fan technology because fans and blowers is another interesting topic in the air conditioning design. Uh, uh, what type, what kind of fan you have to go, and you can always compromise. Uh, uh, is it a centrifugal flow or axial flow fans, and uh, what, how much CFO you want to handle it, and it all depends upon again application to application. If noise is not a main consideration, accordingly you can go on. Then fan efficiency also because fan technology is also improving, and then now VFD is also variable frequency drives. This is also maybe for another 20, 20 years back only this technology is now evolving so much advanced. And then we have a digitalized controls, demand control ventilation, and some of the things we have discussed earlier also. Then we have also powerful heat exchanges now, air to air energy uh, recovery. So this all uh, where we can focus, as I told you, this uh, heat exchanger uh, design. Generally, we always use uh, copper tubes, aluminum fins, uh, or maybe copper tubes, or maybe uh, uh, copper fins, depending upon uh, your uh, design depending upon to application to applications. Uh, uh, like I, I was designing this seawater air conditioning, that presentation probably I have shared it with you three years ago. So uh, we were thinking um, uh, like in Muscat, uh, just as a temperature of almost three, four kilometers at the depth of almost 800 meters, the water is seawater is available at four degrees centigrade. So what I need is I have to just pump that water and I have to uh, exchange it through a platinum heat exchanger. The heat exchangers will be definitely very expensive. And then uh, normal water, I put the, the heat transfer. So the water will become chilled water will become maybe um, uh, seven degree or eight degrees degree. So that water I can circulate for my district cooling system. This was the idea. Maybe I don't know how many of you have seen that uh, uh, my uh, paper, uh, my presentation, what I've sent earlier, I shared it also. So this type of uh, uh, ideas definitely will help us to for the energy saving ideas and uh, even fan also. So energy, particularly I'm talking about the heat exchanger in that. 
heat exchanger manufacturing, heat exchanger design technology has evolved now so much. Even there is a, uh, so much R and D is now people are doing on that. Now, uh, come to the air handling system in that. One is product side, chiller side, and then come to this, uh, as such, if you come to the refrigeration cycle, major equipments are compressor, and then you have a, both chiller as well as your condenser, or our heat exchanger, including the cooling tower, if it is a water cooled system. Then you also have the pumps, of course, it's a mechanical product. Mostly the pumps, what we use is um, centrifugal pumps in that. And then uh, you come to the controls. Uh, controls, basically, you don't match in that because it's not consuming much power. The major power consumption is uh, your compressor. So the compressor technology is also evolving. And uh, uh, very nowadays, everybody is going for this, uh, even if it's a top of unitary type of air conditioners. Those was the days earlier, they used most of the air conditioners were a reciprocating compressor, particularly this 1.5 ton and uh, 2 ton like that. Uh, but now, rarely they use uh, reciprocating compressor. Everywhere they go for rotary compressors because of the sleek design, less noise, and all these things in that. So now come to the air handling system in that. So in the air handling system, uh, designing from the air, indoor air quality point of view, also you have to design, but also you have to also have the energy uh, saving point of view also. Uh, uh, that is, uh, uh, your controls plays a very important role. Many times, as I told you, the controls, the NSCI is so much, uh, even you should not uh, compromise in going for a low quality, low quality controls. You should always go for uh, uh, better quality and very reputed make, and which really uh, could which have so much sensitive, I mean, uh, durability. And this, otherwise, most of these electronic controls or sensors life cycle is only two to three years. And then it starts malfun malfunctioning. If it does not sense it properly, and if it does not give the analog signal correctly, and then if you you don't if you have some issue with your uh, updating your data digital data controller. And then uh, the whole, uh, whatever the system uh, you are operating, during the operating time, uh, the energy, what you are trying to save, everything will become useless in that. So, so these are all the various uh, things what you, really, you can uh, go for, um, uh, particularly in the air handling, maybe you can put zone wise, and then you also go for a, a, a variable air volume system. Uh, maybe 30 years ago or 40 years ago, we don't have that. We always go for a, constant air volume system. But now we also have a different uh, uh, variable air volume system, another uh, advanced, uh, so much uh, uh, studies have done. And uh, But we have also disadvantages we have system, which I'll be talking when I'm talking about the air volume system and particularly operating difficulties, uh, especially in the terminal level, actually. And, and uh, when we go for a single zone VM system, some advantages, and actually it's very strongly recommend uh, 90. Uh, the particularly the fan coils with the chilled water coils and supply fans with the motors greater than or equal to five hours power shall have the supply fans controlled by the two speed motors or variable speed motor. This was as they recommends. So this may be one reason, and we can always take it in that. And any cooling demands less than or equal to 50%, the supply fan control shall be able to reduce the airflow to no greater than the larger of the following. One of the, the full green speed, uh, the full span speed, or the volume of the outdoor air required to meet the ventilation requirement of standards, because ventilation requirements are described in standard 62.1, which we discussed, uh, we reviewed yesterday in that. So similarly, uh, optimization benefit, when you try to optimize the fan pressure, because yesterday, uh, even Dr. Yath was uh, slightly telling, you know, when I was talking about the, you, you also asked some question, sir, when I put so much filters, so what type of the pressure drop? For him, he's an expert on the filtration side. So he always talks only, we, he looks only from the filtration if you find a view. But you being an air conditioning engineer, your interest is again, uh, when I put so much uh, uh, like free filter or dislocation, fine filters, even um, um, infra filters, ultra filters, everything when you add it, definitely uh, the pressure drop across the system will increase. So that all you have to find out. And then your uh, uh, fan performance curves, you have to study very carefully because majority of the time, our AHUs normally work on the part load condition. So this we normally do at the simulation level in that. So uh, uh, fan pressure and ventilation optimization benefit in 
in that. So for that also, we have a point on that, uh, that just highlighting that. So now coming to the high performance chill water system, variable system, which I will be talking now. Can we have five minutes break now? Hello? Uh, sure, sir. Uh, okay. Yeah, I just will go continue with after five minutes break. In that. Please, you can call me when you are ready. I'll just take some uh, water. I have a request for the Pinnacle team. Uh, yes. We have selected a very, very interesting topic today. So, uh, the, we wish to know the intent of selecting this topic. And since you have selected this topic, you may having some specific questions or doubts. Then only you have selected this topic. And we appreciate that. So I suggest you, if you have any doubt, please list down and in between as the session goes, you can ask Dr. Ramaswamy. So he can be clearing your specific doubts pertaining to this subject, which you may be applying to your day to day life or calculations or something like that. So he may reply in parallel to in tangent with that. Uh, or if you feel that all our doubts are getting answered in this uh, session, then it's uh, we are more than happy. That's it. Yeah, that, thank you, oh. Mr. Niraj. Thank you very much. Actually, the idea of the their course, we call this advanced HVAC this design course, very meticulously we have structured actually. You know, when uh, the outline course was given, so yeah, every uh, step by step we are going actually. We started uh, from that to structure that one only. And now even next class probably we are going to talk about the uh, clean room and then we are talking about the variable air. Then we are also finally we are talking about the heat pump separately and then finally we'll come to the ventilation mechanical ventilation with the ASTRA standard as well as uh, car parking specialized uh, uh, this thing that will be uh, other part of the services in that forced mechanical ventilation and uh, so that will be uh, which normally we don't involve much uh, the pressurization air pressurization system smoke evaluation system so that does not much involve uh, the refrigeration part in that Little bit actually, I'm not. I cannot say that it did not involve. That is the reason I kept that one as the last of my topic in that. But all these things I also structured. I structured in such a way that uh, the interest also develop, and then you will also slowly and gradually you will also understand. And then, uh, yeah, but uh, it is not the end of uh, our uh, class. As I told you in the first class, our relationship will definitely continue. We can always keep in touch with uh, Mr. Neeraj through uh, me through Mr. Neeraj. And we will keep in touch also in that. Okay. Yes, sir. So, yes, sir. Yeah, let's take a five minutes break and we can rejoin. Please.
हेलो सर कैन यू स्टार्ट हेलो हेलो या आई थिंक वी शुड स्टार्ट या वी स्टार्ट नाउ यस सर ओके या so uh, we, we just we completed uh, the uh, the the how the how we have to optimize in the uh, particularly the fan pressures i also talking about the various types of fans selection the ventilation because ventilation load is very important in the heat load calculation also and uh, <coughs> that also which is uh, points in the this thing in that <coughs> so now come to the variable air volume system combined with the chilled water chilled water can be a <laughs> we are cold or water cold and depending upon that even the supply temperature as majority of the time we design this uh, load for a peak load condition so uh, you have to also have a proper uh, part load condition operating condition design and then uh, you should also selection itself you should go for a high efficiency chillers and uh, depending upon the place to place uh, which uh, some of the research paper uh, in that way uh, in us so much work uh, reports are available in ashray uh, from the los angeles uh, california actually in that because that area in texas and arizona we there normally they do lot of cooling in that other places if you have most of the paper related with the heating actually heat pump so if you really want to refer a lot of library uh, research papers uh, in the ashray if you should look from the uh, california and uh, arizona and texas and then mississippi that area Uh, so that will more related to our uh, like a uh, in, uh, indian uh, design now middle east most of the time we have a cooling i told you this is what that uh, when i was telling about the building code uh, estadama that means in arabic it is called sustainability it is initiative which normally uh, take the whole uae uh, for the sustainable urbanization considering the environmental factor economic factor cultural factor social factor uh, see if you see their architectural of the building uh, our architectural of the different will be have different kind of architecture if you go to us they have different kind of architecture of the building normally if you if you come here and they don't provide much uh, the sh shades in the windows and they also have this dome structure of construction uh, so these all many things you have to consider that is what this all you have to take into consider uh, these people have considered and they developed a very good uh, documentation so that the whole middle east you can take it as a reference point in that i i think i i am trying to search that document if i don't have uh, i will download it and i will send it also this may be useful for you when you are trying to uh, some project here in the middle east countries in that and then um, as i was yesterday we have clearly discussed about the various kinds of calculations uh, uh, ventilation rate procedure indoor air quality modeling and particularly when we are talking about the mechanical ventilation and then uh, some places you may have uh, uh, you may have a possibility of allowing the natural ventilation so this all sips has done a very good research on that because those countries if you go to uk and all the thing uh, the outside air uh, not that much polluted actually uh, now maybe the situation will be different interior interior that means they call as uh, not in the cities not like london or uh, a uh, major developed industrial area cities but other places normally uh, they try to get more on uh, natural ventilation also on that uh, in their uh, this thing in that so we, yesterday we talked about the ashray standard for the ventilation purpose ventilation means and ashray general ventilation for indoor air quality but when it comes to hospital design we have to talk about the ashray 170 with the ashray fundamental in that and this also yesterday i discussed more about the indoor air quality procedure ventilation procedure so in that also you have a lot of opportunities for the energy uh, saving goal so we have also talked about the zonal calculation how we have to write now a question will come uh, sir should i follow a uh, ashray code or the local building code this will be the doubt everybody will have because ashray uh, 62.1 or ashray is 90.1 or you are talking about ashray 170 
So now we have a local building code, which one I should follow for the ventilation purpose or for everything. So generally, you always go with the ASHRAE. Ignore the local code. No, that is not recommended. Similarly, comply with the code. Ignore the standard. That is also not recommended. So what, what is the ideal way? What is the correct way? Optimum way? You comply with the code. Request to vary it for the appropriate. Because these standards are prepared. All these professional bodies, they develop the standard for the given purpose. The local code, they know they have also legal commitment. Judiciary, they know understand. So that probably you have to go with the, comply with the building code, energy efficiency building code. Like for example, if you are in India, we have energy bureau efficiency. So that code, they must they have so much documents, so much even they give the certification also. They have exams also they conduct for the energy auditors. If you are a qualified energy auditor, you can always do the energy auditing in, uh, of the building and you can do the SAR rating and all the things like that. And they conduct, I think, um, uh, I remember about a few years ago. So, so this is this is the ideal condition. You should always comply with the local code. Or if you are designing for a real estate, this is what I asked you. When you are designing a building in Oman, you always should go for the what the local building code says. And we unfortunately, some countries they don't know local building code. Then we go for the, the standard. If there is a local code, then find out. More or less, these codes are also developed based on the professional bodies database only in that. So that is the thing in that. Now, this is what I was telling the product design, in the, particularly the heat exchanger, because in, if you see the refrigeration circuit, this micro channel heat exchanger, it is also another upcoming technology, which normally uh, I have attended uh, three years ago, four years ago, uh, on the online uh, class course on this. Uh, how, what are the benefits of this uh, micro channel heat exchangers, particularly in the air cold system, uh, air cold condensers? and all the unitary type of package units and all the things. So they are climbing and the refrigerant charge also almost 30% because mass flow of the refrigerant is also very, very important. Now, if you uh, say about 200 tons or 300 tons, huge amount of refrigerant you are going to charge and refrigerant is also very expensive. And then each refrigerant has a different kind of properties, different kind of boiling point, different kind of viscosity, different kind of density, what of kinematic viscosity, all these, that is the refrigerant properties. So that is all that, of course, normally the manufacturers, they decide it. But, uh, uh, but the heat exchanger part, maybe you may tell, sir, which we are not going to select this type of thing. Maybe when you are going to design your cooling coils, your AHUs, maybe you can always insist for this type of micro-channel heat exchangers you can put in your specification. So that will definitely help you with that. So when you similarly, when you take the outdoor condition, like you have to always consider uh, latitude, daily range. Uh, this is also very many times people they are considering that. Maybe in your software, it may be there. Similarly, when you go for the indoor condition, uh, the end user, what he wants, you can always try to uh, have a flexibility on that. And uh, normally the architect may not, uh, as I told you, in every air conditioning, the initial design is always a raw data. They don't give the, you don't give you 10% of the data what you want. Many times you have to have the assumption. So that's what the data collection is also an art rather than a science. You have to go with and you have to meet with everybody, get the data, and then uh, wherever you have the weak uh, links, wherever and gap, gaps are there, as much as possible you get, and then you go and educate them and get the data. Because these people may not be used knowing all these things. They don't understand uh, the difficult, the, these factors, which is going to impact on the design of an organizing system in the door. These people have given uh, recommended uh, indoor conditions and all the things. And more than that, probably the end user, if there is a flexibility. I have also told my case study when we are doing this uh, clean room in the Hindustan Cables Limited uh, many years ago. And uh, the, the, the consultant or the, uh, the people, they wanted to have 18 degrees centigrade inside, which I felt is a waste of energy. So later stage, when I discussed with the process consultant, uh, they agreed, no, they need only about even 26, 27, 28 is also okay. Just imagine from 18 to 26, the 18 degrees required on some amount 10% or 20% of the total area. The area may be 50,000 square meter or square, something in like that. So this type of thing, basically, you can always interact with that generally. Similarly, when you do the heat load calculation, generally what you do if people normally you depend on all the time your software. So software is basically whatever the data you have given, it will give you the value. But I strongly recommend if you really uh, want to do it, identify the building materials, uh, that also in the instance will be very difficult. But 
but follow with the architect building material and what type of local materials available and all the values you may not have available in the data so you have to use always your guess and then find out accordingly you have to find out then also the safety factor i don't know when you are doing the heat load calculation for the sensible heat and latent heat how much uh, safety factor you are taking now uh, in manual calculation we go with like uh, 10 to 15 percent yes or uh, yeah okay that's right so sometimes i know i still remember uh, when i was doing i normally take not more than 7.5 percent okay uh, is it for software now yes now for sensibility or... they normally take later heat they are taking five percent only because... no no those days i i normally do manually only uh, even here now basically when use we normally take the same uh, for the sensible heat normally we take 10 percent for latent heat load we take five percent only and uh, then uh, duct loss and all the things average you take 7.5 percent in that so then whatever the software we are using that should be also approved by the government regulation this is also very very important because uh, sometimes uh, uh, i don't know that the data are not updated so that is very very important the local code also what they say is that so these all the uh, where you can always have the uh, as a design engineer you can do that so well, doctor i have one doubt uh, yes if, uh, sensible heat and latent heat uh, safety factors 10 9 5% are this specified in the standard or it's a general industrial practice to take it's it? a general industrial practice actually some people go for even 7.5% okay in that because this why do we have that difference sir uh, sorry for loads all uh, say when you have a process factory yeah because latent load will load contributes too much of uh, load on your uh, chiller your moisture removal if you see in the psychrometric chart your load, monsoon load will be always very high, isn't it? Your latent heat load is always very, uh, uh, moisture is always a uh, source of heavy load in the in air conditioning heat load calculation. If you take the table, the latent heat will be always very, very high. If, uh, because all, like even equipment load, if you consider, if you fan and all the things, most of the things are sensible heat. But when you come to the latent heat, in product you bring like uh, yeah, uh, uh, any 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 product or even occupants if you are a yeah, person his latent heat load your body odor and all the things so that has to be treated properly so the latent heat load always gives more load on the uh, system in that and then similarly the cooling tower particularly the water cooled system it has got a lot of advantages but cooling tower design is also very very important you know the if you don't design it properly cooling tower if you don't uh, operate the parameters, and especially uh, if somebody goes to the cooling tower, uh, if you don't uh, have a proper uh, data, uh, the approach like uh, places like Chennai or even Mumbai, and uh, the definitely the efficiency of the cooling will be always very less because the outside most of the time it's a high humid air in that. So that also fluctuates in the evening time. Most of the time the humidity goes very high during the late nights evening time or even the early morning hours, night time. As the daytime goes, when the dry temperature increases, the humidity also getting decreases. This is uh, basically from the psychrometric chart in that. So similarly, you also should select the energy efficiency ratio from the catalog in that. So finally, we always go for the VFD, now uh, variable frequency, because most of the time, uh, we always use this type of fans and all the things on the partial load condition. So VFDs are definitely Another uh, latest advanced technology which really helps us to go for uh, uh, energy saving in that. So you should always ensure that these VFDs uh, uh, motors are involved in the in your design in that. That is a must actually in that, and uh, that is uh, where particularly wherever the mechanical ventilations are there. Uh, now most of the manufacturers they have a VFD, and even not only in uh, fan and even pumps also. Uh, all you can see VFD pumps, your motors, even air conditioners now. They call it as inverter air conditioners, isn't it? In the market, everybody, uh, the marketing like that is inverter air conditioners. So basically, they know that. But generally, I, I, in the in the in the room air conditioners, I don't anticipate much scope on that because more or less uh, we don't do any design on that. We normally uh, this much area thumb rule. A bedroom is cost uh, about. Uh, uh, 20 square meter or 18 square meter so i will go for 110 or 1.5 10 like that so though they are calling us an inverter i feel that it is more or less, more uh, more or less like a uh, marketing uh, thing rather than but bfd definitely plays a very important role in the central air conditioning system in there 
this is what I'm telling the moisture load. Moisture load in the building design is a very, very important. Anywhere it can be maybe pressure difference because of the difference between the mechanical ventilation, stack effect, and maybe the wind. And uh, the moisture load, the latent heat load is always uh, carries so much energy. Removal of the moisture, if you, you can, I, probably if you do the psychrometric analysis, you can see that actually in that. Similarly, uh, you have to also put the proper uh, eliminators in the coil, uh, uh, with the supplier in the AH2 design. Otherwise, you have so much condensation will happen in the, uh, in the ducting side. And the ducts also properly to be insulated. And many, many operating time I've seen, if they are not properly insulated, and that is also a huge amount of energy loss. You cool the air to uh, for 12 degrees centigrade, and you take the duct maybe 200 meters, 300 meters with the proper insulation. So by the time when it reaches the outlet, the supplier outlet, it will become uh, the heat transfer, uh, you know, heat is immediate. The more the temperature difference, the more the uh, heat will flow. This is a simple uh, thermodynamics law. So similarly, uh, dew point temperature, you have to be very, very careful about that. Uh, that also I mentioned on that day, if your ADP, ADP, if you are maintaining your surface temperature below the ADP of that you are uh, saying, definitely condensation will come. So the condensation occurs means it's another issue of the moisture growth. The moisture will definitely allow the for the fungus and mold to grow. So this type of thing is that you have to you have to definitely look into that. So I am just uh, trying to uh, uh, go to the another one now. Uh, the next slide and uh, just please uh, wait now. I will just open it now. Are you able to see now? Uh, not now, sir. Uh, now we can. Yes. Yeah, this is again a continuation of that one. And uh, uh, like uh, this, I'm trying to focus more on the Indian sector for part two. So far, we are talking general. Uh, there are a lot of opportunities in the first, first part. We covered basically. Uh, product as well as air handling and duct design, and then uh, BFDs, and then whether we should go for uh, a standard or local building code. So I thought that probably I have done some study about this uh, uh, Indian uh, energy pure efficiency, and I also browsed it actually on the uh, Indian side, cooling side. And uh, Indian government is definitely doing so much work on that. And uh, they are also anticipating the cooling demand will go almost double in 2020 in another six years. And because of, uh, as I told you, air conditioning is not a, a luxurious now, no more. It is a part and parcel of the life. And then the, uh, the quality of the life of uh, everybody, and then even look with the increasing uh, outdoor air temperature and extreme heat condition. And then you have urbanization also. So, uh, the city is now expanding exponentially. And then, uh, so much pollution and everything. So everybody wants all well, the air conditioning is basically, basically a part and parcel of the life now. So we also need so much uh, energy actually. And most of the energy what we are producing the, for cooling from the buildings only. This is what the statistics says. 57% of, of the Indian energy demand for cooling comes from the, only from the buildings. So just imagine about the other industries, processes, definitely. So building as a building service engineer, you have a great responsibility on that. And then uh, if we really use the uh, proper practices in the design as well as the servicing of our cooling equipment, 
definitely there is so much uh, uh, opportunities for the significant change of the energy. So the government has really taken the cooling. That's what called us. Maybe you must have heard about this one, Indian Cooling Action Plan. This I read uh, probably a few years ago uh, as, a, as a driving mechanism for the sustainable cooling solution. So that their emphasis basically they want to have a benchmark. They want to reduce the cooling energy demand by 25 to 40%. And refrigerant demand by 25 to 30 percent by with this range by 2037. That means another uh, uh, 16 years. And with the from the base value of they have taken the base value of 2070 to 2018. This is what the, the the mission of this Indian Cooling Action Plan. This is what this ICAP was maybe three four years ago they planned actually because uh, the, those is the day uh, it's again offshoot of the COP. We have already one of the secretaries of conference of parties signatories in Paris in that. So they have also given so much technical recommendation. Uh, I, I hope if you have a time, you can go through that one. Otherwise, if you want, I can share it in my reference material. Very interesting, I read it that only I have taken the synopsis from that. They've given so much recommendation. Now, one is the low carbon cooling segment as a focus area for the state run uh, and uh, private incubation centers for the encouraging innovative technologies, business ideas. So this is also one of the things which first class I told you, I have one uh, student, a very intelligent student, and he, he uh, two, three weeks ago, he called me, though it is a small, but many smalls only make a big actually. So he was trying to have a, a idea to how to convert this uh, thermoelectric Peltier effect as for the air conditioning purpose. So the design, everything he is now uh, doing and he is making a prototype, even the government, we strongly recommend the university. Uh, we have also selected him as an innovative project. And now uh, the prototype is making it there. It is same like, you know, in the automobile sector, when the electrical vehicle started coming now and uh, refurbishment to the old vehicle. This is also very interesting, isn't it? Uh, this is what again, again, I'm telling when it comes to our automobile sectors, we have done so much advancement, so much embedded system is played into the uh, the safety point of view, the engine performance, even the sound and everything. Same, probably you may ask, we must have definitely advanced in the refrigeration side. But if I say comparatively, we are not that much up to the mark of what uh, automobile sector has achieved. This is one of my, uh, uh, my personal concern. I addressed many platforms actually in that. There are many ideas, many ideas are there, alternative technologies are many there. Why can't we explore it? Even in the uh, like, for example, when I was doing my engineering, maybe 40, 42 years ago, uh, I have done uh, uh, or air conditioning. Maybe you must, I don't know whether you people uh, normally in the car or what we do, the compressed, uh, we have an engine power, we take almost 15 to 20% of the power by the compressor in that. It is connected with the uh, uh, clutch plate and this one. So. We thought that, okay, we will uh, try to use your exhaust gas is almost 300 degrees centigrade. So why can't we use this exhaust gas for using the air conditioning system? So we thought that we can use this vapor absorption uh, system on that. On that basis, as a student project, academic project, we did even those days, uh, we don't have this type of uh, sophisticated cars. It was only the maximum car was ambassador or maybe Fiat. These are the two cars were available. Even to get the data, because I have to keep my heat exchangers where I can keep. The engine space is already very limited. So I have to keep only in the dicky. So I have to have a sacrifice. So dicky space is basically designed. The, the need statement of a dicky for a car was to keep the uh, luggages. So if I am going to occupy the dicky for keeping my equipment, so or I have to opt for the my engine space where I have to keep this uh, fit in there. So, but uh, this was a student project, academic project. We had so much limitation. But the idea was definitely interesting in that. So that's the same way we have the government is also in a, uh, engaging in that. So this is how now we are also uh, integrated design. We talked about that. Uh, uh, a poorly designed or commercial commissioned HVA system can significantly increase annual energy consumption. Your recurring cost definitely will increase. And But definitely if you are designing efficient system, uh, it, uh, uh, it uh, not only efficient system, it's not only selecting the best ER efficiency or something like that, but you have to also integrate it properly. So that's what I'm telling you. It has to be integrated. It has to be designed. It has to be properly commissioned, installed, tested, and then maintenance subsequently. So many things are involved in that. 
So generally, we know of the various kinds of building codes, how the building codes are classified. Some of the buildings I must have missed it. We have a hotel industries, we have healthcare industries, business buildings, uh, all offices, even the different offices have different, different factories, workshops, shopping facilities, process industries, another one, oil industries or chemical industries or textile industries, cold rooms industries or agricultural industries, so much. So uh, the commercial building itself, it grows almost nine to 10 percent on average. So, uh, so that's what we have. Our energy Conservation Act is what one of the thing, legal requirements. So that's what this act says that it legal framework and institutional setup for the energy efficiency policy, including energy conservation building code. This is what this I'm talking from the Indian point of view. On that basis, only all this code and everything they fix the target in that. So, what is basically the energy uh, ECPC does? It always encourages generally optimal sizing capacity. They fix the baseline also, and they also said that the equipment should be should meet the minimum efficient standard in terms of COP or uh, energy efficiency ratios, whatever they must have prescribed depending upon the type of building in that. Then you all, they also recommend uh, various parts like cooling towers, condenser fans, chilled water pumps. Then they also recommend all you should use all these variable frequency drives, use the economizer. Then all, they also specify insulation requirement depending upon your temperature requirement for the pipes as well as that depending upon the distance and all this available in the building code in that. So you have to refer. I, I, I don't know how you how many people are referring that one, but this type of information sort may not be available when you are designing for the Middle East, particularly Oman. But if you are if you go to the uh, Estadama, then the Estadama also available things will be very very little because they don't uh, have a uh, data. The database may not be that much updated, particularly insulation material. They may have a very limited insulation material because they are normally taken only from the suppliers because they don't have everything they import it. So they may have only one or two. That is what I was telling every five years. This type of building codes have to be reviewed and updated. Now, similarly, if you are going for a natural ventilation, they should also comply with the uh, guidelines. Now, I'm, I'm just uh, telling now some of the uh, um, building here, one of the hospital here, it was designed by a UK consultant maybe 40 years ago. A room inside, they put a split air conditioner, uh, floor mounted those days. Even they were not put the ceiling mounted, but there is no fan. No fan. So, you know, you know, you know the advantage of the forced air convection actually. Many times uh, you need not run to the uh, run the air conditioners because uh, maybe in the month of uh, November or December, if there is a fan for the air circulation, even just you open the small uh, windows and that will give some ventilation. You don't need to run air conditioners. But unfortunately, here it is not like that. You have to run all the time. Otherwise, you will have a suffocation in that. So this is what uh, similarly you have. Uh, the, uh, most of this uh, ECB was developed by urban department. The Energy Conservation Act, uh, the state government, because though they have, they also empower the state government. Every we have a federal government, so every state government got their own uh, code also, and then they should also notify to so amendment. Uh, they review it and they should uh, review it to this uh, the ECBC to suit the regional and local conditions in the state gazette. So so much legal requirement is going on. In India, similarly, they must be doing in various states in USA also. But that, that is not the case here. So this is all we know that uh, when we start implementing this type of uh, ECBC 2017 in India, and uh, this what they're telling actually, uh, if you start implementing, you may you definitely are able to save 50% of the energy saving by 2030 if you are designing the building based on this. And uh, then you are going to reduce almost 15 gigawatt peak demand reduction because the load will also then. Then you are also give, able to save almost 250 megawatt uh, uh, of CO2 savings in that. So that ECBC benefits states and uh, all this, uh, uh, they should always have everything. Every state has got their own requirement in that. No, no. Then I, I said, told you, this is basically you have to go for a cohesive decision. What is the, you have fixed the building fabric, energy efficiency, that is the central focus. Then you have a uh, testing side and then design side, and then finally uh, the commissioning and all the things. So that is the only figure uh, graphical representation. So some of the critical design check, how you do it that is the building is correctly oriented with regard to the prevailing wind and sun direction in this design stage itself. Yeah, because 
uh, as an uh, HVAC engineer, you always to have a data or whether it is meeting as per the our EC local building code because architects also they follow, but you can always check it up with that. So you are or, or the areas are arranged to minimize energy requirements. Some places uh, the flow, uh, the architect look at a different angle. But when you go and uh, say the areas, uh, you may always have a suggestion. And the flow of the areas, the meeting of the area, because this is what, again, at the integrated design, at this first slide I mentioned, in that every communication, every stage, you have to interact with the every each end user. Uh, you like services in between if you put in the middle of the building, or you want to put the building at the ex extreme end, how much uh, loss will be there, pressure losses will be there. So these type of things probably, I'm just an example I'm telling you that. Similarly, have you done all the calculations? These are some of the checklists. Have you done all these calculations for the insulation material, selecting the heat, water, heat transfer coefficient? So what type of uh, air condition area, sh shading factors, walls, uh, the floors, even uh, doors, and what type of windows, window mechanism they have and because you are you have so much infiltrated road so this all in the checklist probably you must be you must develop you must develop based on your local uh, code in that so so this will uh, and as uh, such as 91 point they have put certain uh, process in that and uh, it's a collective use of the manufacturing because in this it's a compilation of all the views for the manufacturers and the construction communities and then uh, they also set minimum required for the energy efficient design and construction. So it is a very interesting document. It's a very big document. I think it is there in your reference uh, notebook. Various chapters are there. And in that, uh, they also uh, apply. All the standard would apply, whether the heating or cooling, the standard should be applied in that. And they also given, this is, we see various chapters. This is a chapter wise. What is the scope and all the things. So basically, the chapter six is mainly applicable to us, heating, ventilation, and air conditioning. Other things probably, I, I strongly recommend you should review it. If you have any doubt, you can always refer. If your architect is talking something about that, but this is again related to the ashtray. Now you may tell, sir, this ashtray is telling like this. Now what my local building code is telling something, some bad. So which one I should refer? But to my knowledge, most of these local building codes, when they develop, they always take this type of uh, quotes also as a reference material. So whenever there is a difference uh, of opinion, you prefer to the local code because ultimately you need to have a, a legally, you are answerable to the local regulation in that. So uh, similarly, uh, chapter 10, uh, electric motors, uh, regulate site tree system construction like that. So these all uh, compliance path, how you have to comply various paths and the, in the energy rated. Then they're also talking about the uh, efficiency rating matrices. Now, uh, everybody has got a different kind of matrices, like we call somebody who is called the COP, and some we call as energy efficiency ratio, nothing but kilowatt per ton. And then they call this uh, uh, seasonal energy efficiency ratio, particularly for the central air conditioning plant. And then they also call the annualized metrics, such as integrated part load value, IPLV, uh, for the chillers and integrated energy efficiency ratio, IER, for commercial rooftops and variable represent for VRF, actually. Uh, this is another one, VRF system is also latest one, which is now variable represented flow in that. And then we also talk about the seasonal efficiency ratio for the small package plant. So the annualized matrices are a much better representation of the true performance of the equipment because most commercial equipment cell basically is, uh, runs at full load. So that you and everybody knows uh, because we designed for the, the peak ambient condition. But that hardly occurs uh, in a year, few days, or few hours. So that industry is also, so that's why this industry is gradually moving the emphasis of the efficiency matrices from the full load matrices to the annualized matrices. So don't go for this full load matrices and go with the annualized matrices. So for that, uh, you have to refer this type of data. Your uh, local codes will definitely will be a very good guiding factor for you to design a better energy efficient system in that. So you have to also compare the relative performance of the different type of systems. And you have to put in the system system. If I go for a vapor compression system, or even with I go for a reciprocating compressor, or with I go with the scroll compressor, I know there are certain standards depending upon the load. But you can always go with various design aspects. 
in the refrigeration side, and then when it comes to air conditioning side also. This type of analysis you can do through the energy modeling in that. Now you see that the EER. I'm just telling an example. How much research development we have developed now. In 1982, in the residential sector, they keep 7.14. Now in 2002, it has become 9.754. So that much improvement in the product they have done, product development they have done. So this is what the, the research organization like Oak Research National Laboratory, ORNL. When I was in, using their heat pump model, which was developed 30 years ago, it was so structured, the program was. So much correlation, so much compression, uh, local compression based models. And only one area, probably the capillary design, uh, they were using this uh, uh, heat and trial method. Otherwise, the heat exchanger design, the compressor uh, design, it was very excellent. So this type of modeling, and then that is how they normally improve the equip product uh, design in time. When it comes to central air conditioning, we focus more on uh, seasonal energy efficiency ratio. You see that now 2006, it has come to even 13, isn't it? So, so this is much ad advancement development. Now, similarly, when I, uh, as a thumb rule, uh, yeah, maybe 1970s if I take, uh, like uh, just to take for the peak load. Uh, for this nine, it was 0.9 kilowatt per ton, but now it has become almost 50%, or uh, maybe it may be 0.75 or 0.73. Even when we selected our, uh, uh, this uh, train chiller uh, here in this, uh, this thing, we have taken, uh, 0.72 or 73 in that. That's what they have quoted us in that. So these all for the various type of water cooled chillers, air cooled chillers, how the development started with uh, ASHRAE as well as with the uh, Energy Conservation Building Code, Government of India, both. So this is some of the standards with the COP as well as with the integrated part load uh, value also. This figures how the development started uh, taking place in there for the water cooled chillers as well as water cooled uh, air cooled chillers. The earlier one was ashray. This is with the local Indian uh, part. So we uh, we talk we know about the inverter actually we about the VDF. So I don't want to go more detail onto that. We know that uh, definitely it is proven fact that uh, the VRF technology has really benefited us particularly on central air conditioning system. I don't know, uh, maybe you may ask, uh, you may also evaluate yourself whether useful in a uh, unitary type, particularly the local one ton or one point per ton. And as long as if the costs, they don't charge more, then it's okay. So uh, it, there's no disadvantage on that. So uh, uh, we should also has uh, uh, the certification process. Many of the chillers, I don't know whether you are going to put this uh, uh, EHRI certification process because EHR is another important uh, institute, research institute, American Heating and Refrigeration Institute. They do so much certification, so much courses. They have recently, they opened office in Dubai, this EHRI in that, because they know that the, the, the most potential area is Middle East, where these cooling equipments are used in that. So they, I have also uh, seen some of their uh, president in the various uh, conferences or the meeting in that, and they normally do so much documentation, so much process, they also need the certification. So you should, when you are writing your specification, you should specifically mention, they want that you should be AHRA certified. It's like, it's like quality accreditation. Like uh, last time when I was talking about the uh, hospital accreditation, uh, somebody was asking, uh, how, what are the things? Yes. So in that, if you go for the checklist, one of the checklists are we following this type of standards. So for that, there will be weightages will be there. So uh, the verification of the equipment efficiency is very important. And then more than that, they may be the certificate. But even I strongly recommend what I told in the first class. Uh, suppose you are trying to take uh, higher capacity, very special, very critical equipment. You should always go to the manufacturing plant and you should do the performance test at the site itself. Sorry, at the manufacturer, manufacturing place. And then you verify, issue the test certificate. And then after coming back, when you were installing, that time also we can verify that one in that. So, um, uh, when, when it comes to ventilation system controls, yesterday we discussed ASHRAE section, all this uh, for the fresh air. But here, when it comes to the uh, ASHRAE 90, the section six heating and uh, cooling section six, in that section six, 4.34, they talk about the ventilation system, all particularly about the controls how we can control the chamber, uh, chamber leakages, ventilation fan in that. So this is also maybe when you are doing design. 
So this type of design definitely you can recommend actually with the manufacturers also in that. So, so pressure drop, normally we always talk about uh, high velocity, medium velocity, low velocity design. So how much the pressure drop will come? Why you should go for a high velocity? Why you should, you should not go for a low velocity? Because if you see the capital cost, generally we see that if I design a high velocity, uh, the um, uh, capital cost will be uh, less because you know less material. But fact is not that. The research what they have done, what they have done, they, if you see the system velocity uh, for a capital cost, for low velocity, uh, you have the capital cost is low. You see the figure in that. In the figure, if you compare it, and uh, because you have to compare uh, the, when you have the high velocity, the pressure drop is very high when you go for the higher velocity. But when you go for the low velocity, your pressure drop is less. So the electricity cost is less. And the, uh, so according to the capital cost, will be also less in that. So this is just for comparison I have given in that. Similarly, uh, we should go for a, a, a direct digital controller, DDC requirement, which I was talking about the BMS and uh, the sensors and all the thing in that. So economics are basically uh, always is most of the time, uh, so much air we are taking uh, out, particularly in the uh, outdoor environment when you are taking, you need to have a proper heat exchanger, air to air heat recovery. And that air to air heat recovery exchanges also, you should properly design it in the design stage itself. Then this is some of the sections we talk about that, how, what type of dehumidification you have to do, what type of humidification. Generally, the dehumidification, uh, we do it with the cooling coil because cooling and dehumidification depending upon the uh, number of ADP when you are taking the design. And when, but the use for the humidification, it's all, always we use uh, steam humidifiers because uh, we always put some preheat jacket that uh, heats up the steam injection nozzles to avoid the steam condensing in the duct system. Because majority of the time when you include the humidifier uh, humidification system, particularly in the clean room areas, when you design these age for operation and operation that is, and uh, you, you need to be very, very careful. And uh, AH manufacturers also, all the stages you need to have a check mechanism. And otherwise, uh, in one place, if you ignore it, and that definitely will have so much impact and uh, during the operation time also. And then whatever you are doing, it will not be uh, this thing. And then this section, uh, fan efficiency, beautifully they are talking that nowadays fan technology has so much advancement. This fans and blowers is a very specialized subject. It is nothing but a mechanical engineering centrifugal pump, pumps. But because fan is nothing but we are handling with the air and a pump is handling with the uh, blower. So you it, most of the time, it's a difficult uh, blowers. It may be forward curved or backward curved or normal curved, but axial flow also has got its own advantages and disadvantages. So these are the fan efficiencies talking about this uh, section. Since it was 90.1, these sections are given in that. Similarly, the submission, completion requirement. As I 90.1 clearly says, when you are talking submission for the, your building regulations and all that thing, you have to... So the what are the sufficient requirements should be there? Yeah. So the drawings, manuals, system balancing section, system commission section. This is all the sufficient as per the uh, as uh, as 90.1. When the minimum uh, equipment efficiency tables also uh, given in uh, section 6.8, and uh, they also compare it with all the things uh, minimum equipment matrices for the equipment standard rating conditions defined by the uh, AHRI. Even they also talk about the ISO. Uh, then we also have a uh, association of home manufacturers, the DOE Department of Energy, and uh, we have a cooling tower in, uh, institute. So all is covering in that section. In that, so this is probably you have done a special class on the uh, data center is emerging now, maybe for the last 20, 25 years. This data center, the air conditioning system, is a very specialized subject because you have so much uh, sensible heat in that. So that already you are a specialized course on that. So we have also, uh, as far as Indian Bureau of Energy Efficiency, and they have um, uh, put some target actually. Uh, they are also doing wonderful job. The, the, what they are telling the current penetration of the low carbon cooling technologies in India is noticeably very low. This is what their observation. And they're demonstrating that this segment faces challenges and requires immediate attention and collaborative action from all players within the ecosystem in order to promote growth. So this is the recommendation of this one. So this is a different technology, mostly they used in uh, uh, Europe, uh, particularly in UK. Uh, the radiant and structured cooling in that. 
so this is a simple one normally i don't know how far they may, it can be applicable in india as well as in middle east countries uh, so far i have not done one but when i used to read lot of sips uh, article sips uh, research papers they do so much work they embedded this pipes cooling pipes cold water pipe or hot pipes uh, within the uh, chip this called as the, the structure of the beam, above the beam itself so this is then it radiates to the natural convection so thereby they avoid the force con convection in that how it will be effective and all the thing i am i, I don't know i have not designed so uh, i have just for your information i have uh, i thought that this may be one of the they are claiming that uh, radiant cooling definitely uh, it will uh, improve the thermal efficiency because uh, it will also help us to improve the uh, insulation and air tightness uh, sir uh, is it like so this the... is what they are telling so how much yeah, yes like in this radiant cooling uh, do you think it is a better option at the time of heating instead of cooling yeah that is what still i am i that's what i answered i also told i have not done here in middle east nobody knows that but if you see in any all the research papers journals many paper it comes to me i normally very uh, politely i send back them i am not expert on that but majority of the systems because those european countries they spend lot of heating systems all embedded in that Mm -hmm. You say along the wall, and their wall is also not like we are a brick wall and all the things. They normally go with the uh, normal uh, simple wall, not for the very easy insulation one with insulated wall. So in between they embedded this type of pipes and then they supply the hot water. So instead of hot water, they allow the uh, cool water It, because their uh, wind uh, summer is hardly only two months, maybe May June. After mm -hmm. that, if you go to the whole uh, Canada or even if you go to Europe. Or even US, uh, for, for if you come to this uh, all New York and everything, only May, June, even May is also. I know even the Germany and all that is even May, uh, June. When I was talking to my brother, he was telling even that time also that outside temperature was eight degrees centigrade. Just imagine that. So this is a, this is a just a one point which they are claiming. Uh, this is also one way probably we can save the energy efficiency. and uh, but i don't have much uh, uh, idea because i have not done much work here in this part of the world but probably you may people since you are doing for your client in us so that is the reason i have also included this one and maybe in india also i don't know how much it will be useful it also we don't have much because it also involves so much coordination to our civil contractor in the building design in that so and then again i am coming to the evaporative cooling system majority of the time whenever you want to take uh, depending upon the project If you are taking so much uh, outdoor air, why can't you take outdoor air, particularly when you have a dry climate? For example, if you are designing a, a air conditioning system in places like in Delhi, uh, most of the time uh, from March onwards, March, April, May, June, these four months, the humidity, especially uh, uh, February, March, April, May, May, your dry bed temperature goes almost 45 degrees centigrade. the humidity is only 20% or 20 30% so they were if you if you plot in your psychrometric chart uh, you uh, you don't need even air conditioning so that if you are taking 100% fresh air instead of taking 45 degrees centigrade you use this air washer cool that uh, i know it, you are going to dehumidify it that is a definitely a disadvantage but now we have so much active dehumidification coil there is a lot of improvement in the cooling coil design or worst case we can use some of the uh, another uh, chemical dehumidifiers also we can use so this is what innovative design so the sky is the limit on that that's what i'm telling like the same thing which i did here in this project or i was telling here when oman vcm we have this is a 100 this is a dry area many places we have to take 100% fresh air so we have included this type of evaporative cooling system and i know the water is very very uh, expensive here but we have done analysis and because of that by cooling load the capital cost has really reduced almost 20 to 30% in that and the recurring cost also it includes in that so finally what i am going to conclude is we know uh, the building code local building code is very very important it is to be addressed by the hvc institute all levels energy saved is energy generated ashley 90.1 all the time talk about the energy efficiency we have a local gates and uh, and uh, codes sdm is basically for the middle east when the energy modeling is definitely very important uh, even the design stage and then during the operation stage we should go for the regular energy audit then we should always go for in the design stage itself we should go for the alternative technologies 
and then efficient controls in that. As I told you, energy conservation is a very important topic, a very interesting topic also. Starting from the beginning, you should go for the proper classification, what type of system you need. So from that time, in the pre-concept stage itself, you should fo focus more work and you should classify it properly. Then you also should the room volume, basically the ventilation rate, where you have, because like I was telling, 100% fresh air, how much return you are going to take. So in that, you have a lot of opportunities uh, to reduce the load in that. Similarly, uh, air change, because the air change normally they recommend ranges 50 to 60 or 20 to 10 to 25. So both options, how much, depending upon your outdoor, how you are going to take and how much amount of quantity of return air you are taking in there. Similarly, uh, optimal equipment sizing, the factor of safety what you are going to take in your load calculations. Then when it comes to the distribution and the reduction pressure drop, also you have to select in such a way all this available equipment meets the local code requirement also. The right equipment location, this is again, again, I'm telling you that. When you your master plan, when you are designing, uh, that is also, I told, integrated design. From the concept, and again, you put your services somewhere else and then you take uh, kilometers uh, without much insulation, so much energy loss will be there. So that, that is a simple concept. Like in electricity, the power stations, the transmission loss, still we don't have a technology. You know, so much uh, power what we are generating, we are losing into the transmission loss. Throughout the world, we, uh, engineers are doing research how to minimize the transmission loss in the power, power transmission loss. So that is what nowadays everybody started going for the microgrid. And then you also have so much transformers, substations, and everything in that. So even now, when the renewable energy concepts are coming, we also are always talking about this universal grid concept now. So if you know, when by using this nanotechnology, because I'm not going to that one. So right equipment location, then optimizing the outside air, selecting the high efficiency equipment based on the various local standard, whether it can COP or uh, IPLB or the energy efficiency ratio or seasonal energy efficiency ratio. Similarly, the right uh, configuration of the equipment. So this will definitely help you to become a very good energy conservation engineer. And you can select the better energy efficient system in that. So thank you very much. And if you have any questions, please ask me that. And if you are, if tomorrow also, if you are attending, probably I can I can talk tomorrow about the clean room actually, because this is uh, this will be also another interesting related with this one in that. I am, I'm leaving up to choice actually. The same time, if you want, I will be. I'm ready, but uh, it's up to you. No, doctor, I don't have any. Issue. Yeah, management has uh, spoken to me, and uh -huh. there are no lectures. Uh, okay, they are basically with no problem. No, I'm just just asking if uh, they are selling tomorrow also working day. That's what I was thinking. Yes, because it's relevant. Immediately, people will have uh, maybe um, a holiday they can use to revise it. That then when they come to the next class, they can come with more questions in that. Lot of study materials have also I have shared it. I will be sharing many more also, whatever I like energy uh, study, what I have done for a different kind of buildings. That paper, I will search it today now because I am uh, I'm, uh, I'm not that much uh, organized. Some of the papers I, I normally uh, don't put in the right place. So I have to search it and I have to send it. So that is a delay actually. Whenever I get this type of papers, I will definitely send it. I have almost uh, published more than about uh, 1900 research papers uh, throughout my industrial career. I am not an academician, even though I work in industry, but still uh, interact and then I convert this type of case studies and then I send to most of these conferences. And then I, I also make an interesting paper which comes for my review also uh, in the for the general purpose in that. If that type of some papers, interesting purpose are there, I will definitely share it with you that. So thank you very much and uh, I leave it to you now that. Uh, sir, uh, this side Shubham. And, yes, sir. Yes. Uh, uh, when we were talking about that uh, supplying cold air into the uh, you know conditioned zones mm -hmm. uh, instead of supplying it neutral, like um, if I'm supplying it air at say 48 or 47 degree Fahrenheit to a room, uh, do we like generally? That, that is variable air volume system. When you are combining chill water system, VA with the VA. Yes. Right. Yeah, uh, that is for the VAV system. Because yeah. you, that's what BAV system, the advantage is, uh, the supplier temperature, we, they set point the normally to 45 degree Fahrenheit. Normally now, what will be the, your uh, chilled water supply temperature? Generally, the, we set 5 degrees centigrade or 4 degrees centigrade. And the return normally the delta T in any chiller, 
the delta d is normally 4 degrees centigrade just one minute sir So, uh, uh, yeah, that uh, that BAB system, variable air volume system, is basically uh, 20, 25 years back only. Otherwise, earlier days, we always talk about the constant volume uh, supplier system in that. So, BAB system particularly is very efficient for the part load condition in that. So, now when you are talking, you are, I don't know how you are specifying your water cold chillers or air cold chillers, how much delta T normally you in your specification in the bill of quantities you put in the delta t how much you are putting four degrees centigrade or five degrees centigrade or six degrees centigrade when you are writing your technical specification uh say for like uh, my question was something different but if you're asking like uh, as i know that uh 90.1 ashri station yes, i guess 6.5 point four point seven something uh yes. that is with the, that we should select a cooling coil for a minimum 15 degree fahrenheit delta t so we usually go with that uh but you know uh there are other times there are times when i've seen uh, mm -hmm. some of the designers selecting it uh you know below that 15 degree fahrenheit delta t sometimes they go with 12 degrees sometimes 13 or 14 degree so like uh, are there any exceptions to you know uh this requirement that we need to select it more like for 15 degree fahrenheit or it is like a compulsory compulsion and must be followed in every design wherever we are using uh, chill water cooling coils. Yeah, no, no. The standard is giving one, but it all depends upon the uh, our application also. Maybe if they are designing the designers like 12 degrees centigrade, probably uh, I don't know what type of application actually the the delta T in that and what type of location. Many factors involved in that, but there is. But at the same time, you cannot now design. With the delta T uh, 26 degree or 30 degree. The range is now, it may be plus or minus here, 1% or 2%. It's allowed. But they cannot go more than that because in that case, you may not have the efficiency, will not perform also. Isn't it? Now, instead of 15 degree Fahrenheit, he, he has gone for 12 degree centigrade, 12 degree. So there could be some factors in that, but it's there's no hard and fast rule in that. There's a lot of flexibility in that. Standards specify certain values, and then they are recommended values. Now, if you are going here down and you are going even slightly up also, if you are going to get benefit for you during your modeling time, during your analysis time, and that you can definitely take it in that. Standard, all the standards are only for guidance purpose. And it is not necessary. Unless otherwise, if you have a legal requirement in the local building code. So if a local requirement code said, no, you have to make, for example, inside condition. Local gate says that for a mall, you should not put your indoor condition 19 degrees centigrade or 20 degrees centigrade. So if you consider 19 degrees, they must have given, it should be minimum 25, 26 plus or minus three. They put 25 plus or minus be local. For example, Delhi mall. The mall and, and the local code says 26 plus or minus two. But the ASHRAE standard says 24 plus or minus two. So which one you will prefer? You have to prefer the local code, isn't it? So that's what the local code basically definitely has to be given more importance in that. And if you design, uh, if you are trying to take now uh, indoor condition, say 20 degree, uh, then you are basically wasting the energy. You are also wasting a lot of capital cost, then recurring cost also. So this is how we have to use your judicially the code and uh, standard with your experience and application to application in that. Okay. I think Shubham, your question was something else uh, you said. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, my question was, suppose I'm having a dedicated outdoor air unit. Okay. And with that, I'm supplying air, uh, mm -hmm. that is uh, just the outdoor air to certain zones. Mm -hmm. And uh, instead of supplying the air neutral at 75 Fahrenheit, I have mm -hmm. planned to supply it, say, at 47 Fahrenheit or something, 47 or 48. Uh, mm -hmm. I was actually planning this one on a project I did earlier, and uh, uh, you know uh, the architect uh, told me some uh, you know problems with condensation on walls because of that much you know uh, low delta low exactly exactly air. yes yes because the difference in pressure will be very very low and you you will be losing a lot of energy. 
now you are cooling at your cooling oil you you it's, you, you are you the design says you can do it for 75 degree fahrenheit but now like you are actually, cooling it but sir, uh, <laughs> like in that the idea behind that was because you know uh, cooling uh, you know the outside air that was humid so i yes. had to uh, you dehumidify that but right. since i have dehumidified it at 55 fahrenheit suppose 50 okay. fahrenheit 55 yes then yes. to provide make it neutral i had to reheat again i was trying to you know uh, uh, protect that reheating and supply mm -hmm. that outdoor air at 55 say uh, say 47 fahrenheit that much cold mm -hmm. and uh, i was thinking that you know that much cold air will offset some part of the sensible load in the zone as well so the terminal cooling unit, yes. Yes. I was thinking that could be sized a little, you know, with a lesser capacity. So that was the idea behind that. Earlier, I was planning to put some, you know, uh, linear slot diffusers so mm -hmm. that, that much, you know, that cold air could be distributed very well. Mm -hmm. But, you know, uh, that uh, problem of condensation of, of, on walls, that became a major issue. And then and later on, I had to supply air at uh, neutral instead of cold mm -hmm. so yeah, yeah, uh, that is, yes so in Correct. what I think, climatic yes. conditions should we go with these kind of options because you know uh, uh, if uh, architect would have would have allowed and the uh, climate would have permitted uh, that yes. could have been a better option uh, correct exactly. me if i'm wrong yeah exactly or probably again uh, you are uh, you know uh, I don't know how much the distance actually you are outdoor in it, you are taking this ducting and all, how you are taking your outdoor through conditioned air at a 55 degrees centigrade. Okay, you are due to find, let us assume that you don't use the reheat now. You are taking this 55 degree uh, supply air, the air conditioned air, you are taking through the ducting. Uh, then your, your terminal side, how, uh, you, this ducting has to go through on various level. How you are to through the shaft or is it passing through the there was just uh, a one-story school building, so uh -huh. there was no shaft. I was just looking like, like uh, from the, the from the dedicated outdoor air unit. I was taking uh -huh. to the ceiling, okay, okay, and then okay. was distributed. And uh, okay, that is adding reason, one yeah. more point, sir. Yeah, uh, actually, I have learned that uh, ninety point one, the ASHRAE ninety yes. point one, that yes. also allows us, or in some areas, uh, that restricts the reheating. And then give some exceptions where we can do the reheating, but uh, ninety point one generally says that we should prevent reheating. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, yeah, correct, exactly. Because you are basically you are cooling, and then again you are reheating. It is an air based, and then moreover exactly. the reheating when you put the heaters, in particularly when you come to the VAV system, most of the time this reheaters all at the terminal point it creates a problem. In the operation point of view, also yes. In the VAV system, I mentioned it is correct. You are absolutely correct in that. Yes. So, like, uh, you know, in what kind of uh, uh, situation, like, is it like a uh, something which we cannot do in school building or should not do in school building or some commercial application would be uh, better for this kind of, uh, you know, approach? Or maybe how about like optimization, the outdoor air optimization, suppose I'm planning. And then yes. I'll say that with that out, outside air, I will mm -hmm. supply it at, say, 50 Fahrenheit. I'll supply it. Let it cool that I'm planning suppose to offset some of the latent load and the sensible load in the zone. Mm -hmm. But suppose the occupancy drops down, a school mm -hmm. which was earlier planned for 50 students in a class today yes. is having just say 15 students and yes. uh, we are having occupancy sensors. So mm -hmm. with that, the BMS system reads, okay, now I need to provide just the fresh air for those 15 students yes. and that outdoor air redu reduces. So yes. in that case, like, should I, you know, size my equipment for those cases as well, the terminal, uh, you know, the terminal unit, because in you those know, cases, they but yeah. you, you must have also gone for VAV system, isn't it? The terminal unit, the VAV dampers will be there, which mm -hmm. will accordingly, uh -huh. when we are selecting. This, this is again, you have a VAV system, variable air volume system. Yes, sir. Isn't it? You must have taken the VAV system. You have the, uh, the dampers are there. That will accordingly give the sensors and it will activate your VMS. Then it regulates your flow in the outdoor unit also. Mm -hmm. But because you so know, what type of system? Earlier, uh -huh. maybe I was, uh, maybe I'm planning to offset uh -huh. some of the sensible load by that outside air. Suppose I was yeah, supplying okay. 500 CFM. Okay. But today, the outside air requirement is just 100 CFM. Okay. So then the, uh, the sensible load inside the zone, 
yes. that will that may you know in some cases supersedes the capacity of the terminal unit uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Yes. so uh, you know i face this kind of problem are we mm -hmm. going to have a vav in vav system in detail in the next lecture yes yes there is one class completely vav system one class is there even oh. if you want we can i can take tomorrow immediately in continuation of that what a vav complete vav system i am uh, talking in that again i am talking about the ashtray standard also in that i am referring this 90.1 in that also in that vav Maybe system is there better yes. answer there mm -hmm. yes that's right so yes. yeah uh, i'm sorry to disturb you doctor you are yes. asking about the school i think you are designing and your doubt is pertaining to mainly school uh, doctor has given me on the reference material regarding school that is solar cooling and all which i have already uploaded in the folder of sustainability lecture so in your free time you can go into that and yeah, study also okay. that reference material pertaining to the school so i understand and, uh, we will check and i actually go went through that and uh, this was just a question but, but was not answered in that maybe in the future uh, lectures where uh, doctor will be you know explaining the vav in detail we can get there yeah, maybe that time we can link it in that yeah, yes that's school right. is being yes. more fluctuating kind of a load because sometimes <laughs> yes sir are attending right. sometimes yes. they are into the lab and uh, so uh, definitely the system is totally different than others uh, your question was very much valid in that case and uh, one more uh, requisite uh, to a doctor and uh, neeraj that uh, uh, maybe uh, you know uh, you can put some more light and explain about more about these kind of you know uh, the chartered engineer how to be a pe and those things and what are the utility of those in future and how to do, go through those so maybe that can be helpful at least i am interested yeah okay that's good actually yeah. You, so I think many of the people are already. You have a chartered engineers. Is what you told when I asked in the first day, first beginning of my lecture. So Actually, uh, we said what? that we are trying. Uh, we are working on that on that part. Some of us are working. Yeah. Also. Okay. That uh, of course I can uh, even uh, send. A, uh, um, I will share in the reference material. So, I have actually yeah, the root of that question. One. What I mean to say is, see, the PE is normally Canada and USA is recognized. Yes. So if you do the PE, they have a high chance for immigration and. Of uh, the uh, value to the degree, so uh, but, yeah, yes. not just immigration, but yes, uh, like that gives credential to the. No, world. no credentials. This type of C engineering, you have so much um, uh, um, professionals, people. No, see, learning is a continuous process. Every stage and experience, uh, practicing engineering, comes only by experience. Mm -hmm. How when I I still remember uh, in nineteen eighty five when I was in uh, somewhere near Chandigarh, in front of me the chilled water system. And the ducting pipe in two years, and, you know I, I, everything we studied in um, on paper, uh, academically. But when in front of me, when practically when I saw, then when I involved in the various type of process are uh, designed after two years, eighty seven or eighty eight, when I returned back to my headquarters design. So when I had a different kind of decent project, as I told you, we have a DRDO, origins factories, factories, supercomputing, fiber optic cables, your cold rooms, even uh, comfort air conditioning, UPS, ADC. Many many projects. So every project when I do in the in the drawing board when I am designing, every project has got me uh, matured me as a matured engineer. Every project has taught me a lot of lesson in that. Not only in the design, even various visiting at the site as various uh, execution time. Then in front of your eyes the project is coming up. Then you feel what you have put in the drawing. Then it is uh, physically erected and then during the testing time, commissioning time. Then after coming to Oman also for the last 20 24 years. Not only the new project, even the refurbishment project, the old ones actually, this is all very challenging. It comes by experience. So the more the practice, the more you get more experience and the more challenging question. And everybody should not, not necessarily everybody should know the answer. And it is a, that is what these professional bodies normally, they normally share, carrying, they, they, they create the database. Whatever I, I have, this one I put as a paper. And then that paper, they take the data. And this type of professional bodies, that is very important. Whether ASHRAE or SIPS or even uh, uh, AHRA, all of these, they are doing a definitely wonderful job in that. And I just strongly recommend in that. I was a member for all this. I have done so much uh, paper uh, reading. On that basis, only I have updated my skills in that. Yes. And if you don't update your skill, and uh, then probably uh, it is difficult. I have seen many in academic, most of the time, what I have seen. If you see an electronics professor who graduated maybe 50 years ago, in electronics professor, he must have learned everything only on the vacuum tubes. Now, do we apply vacuum tube anywhere? 
no one, the generation may not be knowing where could be, isn't it? Even now, the computer science book, what I have written, 93, that book, that is become obsolete now. That thing is uh, valid now. Because in the computer graphics, so much advancement, even computer, architectural computer, something, everything has to change in there. So unless otherwise, if I update it, if I don't update it, then probably I, am, I will be lacking in that. So that is what these professional organizations always help you in that. And I will definitely share all these relevant uh, chartered group status and everything to you in that. Even India, but only one point what I can say, this type of all these professional organizations, uh, though they call this a trust, but they also need money. But in India, in that way, if you see the institution of engineers, they are doing wonderful job. Though it's a trust, but the government is giving so much uh, support and their charge is very, very less. I'm telling in India, the education system is so, so, so less, so cheap. And uh, many time I, I know probably hardly we spend any money, but education is so expensive. I mean, this professional body's membership also. So that was the reason when now, when I, after I, uh, my 60 years, I thought, that, okay, I will now, no, not renew, but still actually they're not allowed me. No, no, you have to be here in the membership. So they, are, they forcefully allowed me, asked me to renew my membership last year, actually, in that. Otherwise, I told them now I will be leaving, actually, but they told me, no, you should continue in that. Uh, sir, I got their concern. Uh, we'll discuss separately how we can answer yes. that question in this uh, coming few days, and we will try to accommodate that uh, in our coming sessions. I understood what they need, so we'll Thank discuss you. it separately. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Any questions for the uh, team Penaka? I guess no, sir. I've asked my colleagues and uh, yes, uh, they have their answers. Thank you. Do you want to come tomorrow or? Uh, no, sir. No, no, no. They've already spoken to me, sir. No. Okay. That's right. Okay. Thank you. First of all, yeah, I wish to uh, add it one more thing. Uh, yes. The leg one of our session is, that is part one of our session. This week is uh, over and next week, we are entering into the next week now. Uh, firstly, I'm very much uh, delighted to see the team pinnacle here because the topics they have chosen they could have easily chosen the topic like design management and uh, uh, the project management which are much more general and uh, romantic as compared to the other technical topics but they have given preference to the technical topics and uh, which is not at all romantic you know sometimes we feel boring but uh, still they have chosen these topics and i very much like this approach of the engineers and the management also promoting them and encouraging them to be the more aware on the technical things so keep it up and we are there with you let us enjoy the leg two more even more thank you thank you mr niresh and thank you all my engineers and all the best and have a nice weekend thank you very much thank you sir thank, thank you sir. Sir. Uh, thank, thank you, you. Uh, thank you very much thank you god bless you all thank you thank you sir